Welcome to the Key Chapters of the Bible podcast. This is a daily podcast that's going through the key chapters of God's Word. Well, today we're continuing our examination of the book of First and Second Chronicles. One of the things I hope to show you as we go through these passages here is that there weren't all bad kings. When you read through 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, it can just get really discouraged and like, was well, there no good kings that we just pretty much are reading various kinds of disobedience. However, there were five kings in the southern kingdom that had glimmers of righteousness. They weren't always good, like we're going to see that with Asa today, but there were five periods of what you might call revivals in the southern kingdom. For instance, there was the covenant revival under King Asa here in 2nd Chronicles 15. There is what I'm going to call a judicial revival under King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 18 and 19. There was a priestly revival under King Joash in 2 Chronicles 23, a prophetic revival under King Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles 29 to 32, and finally there was a law book revival under King Josiah in 2 Chronicles 34 and 35. Now we've already looked at the reigns of King Hezekiah and Josiah, and so for the next four days I'd like to look at just the reigns of King Asa, King Jehoshaphat, and King Joash. We're going to start today with King Asa in 2 Chronicles 15. So let's dive into our passage. King Asa reigned from 910 BC to 872 BC. He lived three generations after Solomon, and Rehoboam was his grandfather. King Asa's reign began back in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, and verse 2 says Asa did what was good and right in the sight of God. The rest of this chapter, chapter 14, goes on to detail all of the reforms that King Asa brought into the land and how he trusted the Lord even as he went out to battle in verse 11 and how the Lord gave him victory. Now all of that is the background that brings us to chapter 15. Chapter 15 opens with a prophet named Azariah coming to King Asa, and, and Azariah says to him in verse 2, The Lord is with you when you are with him, and if you seek him, he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And so those words are both encouraging as well as a warning. We're going to see that they actually bore out true in Asa's life. The prophet goes on to say in verse 3, For many days Israel was without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But in their distress, they turned to the Lord God of Israel and they saw him and they let him find him. Now we need to wonder, who is Azariah talking about here? We know that Israel is what the northern kingdom is called at this point, but is he talking about the northern kingdom or is he talking about some other time? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, At first I thought he was probably talking about the northern kingdom. But then when you think about it, I tried to find any time in this roughly the same period where Asa would be around, where there was any kind of repentance. I couldn't find any. So I'm wondering if maybe he is just talking about the time of when Israel was unified during the days of the judges, or maybe during the days of David or Solomon, because there are many places in Israel's history where they did call upon the Lord and repent, and the Lord brought them back into fellowship with him. Either way, the principle that Ezra is making here holds true. There are times when God's people are in rebellion to him, and the Lord will bring difficulty into their lives to bring about this repentance. For instance, in verse 5, he describes this difficulty as a lack of peace and disturbances that afflicted everyone, where the nations were crushing each other, the cities were crushing each other, every kind of distress. But some of the people here turn to God and they find his grace. And the Lord's point through the prophet Azariah here is that Asa needs to continually pursue obedience to the Lord. And he encourages him in verse 7 saying, For you, be strong and do not lose courage, for there is a reward for your work. Well, Asa took these words to heart, and he continued his reforms of the religious and social fabric of the land. And so in verse 8, he clears out the false idols that were distracting the people of God, and he rebuilt the altar of the Lord to reestablish true, proper worship. In verse 9, he was even able to reunify some of the people from the various tribes that rebelled under Jeroboam. This is just a stunning verse here. Because remember, the northern kingdom was just this division. They had rebelled, and they go off, and they're just a separate country. But here we're seeing some of those people came back and reunified under Asa. It mentions Judah, of course, which would be the main tribe that stayed with the southern kingdom. Benjamin also at times stayed with the southern kingdom. But even some people from the tribes of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, they had defected from the northern kingdom, and they came back and reunified under Asa when they saw that the Lord was with Asa. In verse 10, Asa had the people gathered together for this grand time of worship. And in verse 12, they renewed their covenant with the Lord just to seek him with all their heart and their soul. And then look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, All Judah rejoiced concerning the oath, for they had sworn with their whole heart and sought him earnestly, and he let them find him. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. This chapter then concludes with some more of Asa's reforms, like he got rid of the offensive image his mother had made of the goddess Asherah, and not only that, but he also personally invested in providing some of the supplies for the temple. 
So we have here under Asa a revival that breaks out in the land and ultimately just feeds into his legacy. However, there is a shadow over Asa's legacy, and we see a glimmer of that shadow in verse 17 when Asa did not fully remove the high places. Uh, That was common, but still it's being mentioned here. But the real shadow over Asa's reign came in the next chapter, chapter 16, when a prophet goes out to Asa and rebukes him. Asa gets angry at this prophet and throws him in jail. And that just begins a downward trajectory of obedience to the Lord. And later on, when Asa has a disease, he does not seek the Lord in chapter 16, verse 12. And so this record of Asa's life has some interesting principles. For one thing, we see back in chapter 15 that this passage has a lot to say about the heart condition of the people and ultimately how God sees what's in the heart. In verse 7, Azariah wants King Asa to be strong and not lose courage. Just about that inward part of his being there. In verse 8, King Asa does have courage. In verse 12, the people covenanted to seek the Lord with all their heart and soul. In verse 15, they sought him earnestly. And in verse 17, Asa's heart was blameless before the Lord. And so all this lets us know that God, one, sees their heart, and two, what they're doing here, this revival was not perfunctory worship or just simply just outward obedience. This is not just like peer pressure or going along with the flow because everyone else is doing it. They're not mailing it in. This isn't half-hearted. This is true pure worship and obedience from their heart. And look how the Lord responds to this heart obedience here. In verse 15, it says, He let them find him. He let them come to him, and he gave them rest on every side. He was with them. They had peace with him. They had peace within their own land. They had peace with their brothers to the north, at least some of them. And they had peace all around them. God was with them, and as they sought him earnestly from their heart, he gave them that peace. Along those same lines, God's people want to be with those who the Lord is with. You see that in verse 9, and it is so amazing that God allowed for a reunion between some of the divided tribes of the north to actually make peace with these tribes in the south. Just an amazing time of just joyful, peaceful union there. But again, the reason why they wanted to have this unity, this harmony, was because God was with them. And this is just a principle that we need to decide. What kind of person do we want to attract into our life? What kind of person do we want to draw into our life? What kind of person do we want to be respected by? The world is not going to respect people who are on fire for the Lord. The world is not going to respect people who are just completely in love with Jesus. But we have to realize that that's okay because God's people will be drawn to those who are walking with God and he's walking with as well. So how we live will attract different kinds of people. And we need to decide if we want to be the kind of person that attracts those who love the Lord or those who love the world. Again, Asa loved the Lord and the people were just excited to be with him because they want to be with a guy who's walking with God and who God is a part of that person's life. And so Asa's life is just a helpful example of this principle. There's also another principle that we don't want to follow here, and that's that of drifting away from the Lord. You see, Azariah had warned Asa about just, you know, if you are with the Lord, he'll be with you. If you forsake him, he'll forsake you. Azariah's warning to Asa bore out. The Lord was indeed with him, and he saw incredible blessings of the Lord when he was with the Lord. But as he began to forsake God, once he put this prophet in jail, he's like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. God began to pull his hand of blessings back from Asa's life and reign. The reality is, a life of obedience to God is difficult. It requires constantly coming back to the Lord, repenting, asking for God's strength, renewing our covenant with the Lord, just like you see going on here this passage where the people are renewing their covenant with the Lord. That takes work. And sometimes it's like, you know what? I've already done it. I'm kind of tired of this whole renewing my walk with God thing. I'm just ready just to just kind of rest and coast for a while. And whenever we start to coast, we're starting to slide away from a path of obedience and fellowship with the Lord. Asa slid down that path so far, he actually imprisoned one of God's prophets. Now, we may not be able to put people in prison our own life, but we could turn them off or we can avoid them or we could close our heart and our ears to their words, just kind of shut them out of our life. We shouldn't do that. If there's someone in our life who is living fully dedicated to the Lord, who is bringing God's truth to us, who is just a a person who's always thinking, talking about the Lord, rather than pushing him out of our lives, we should draw them in. Well, as we're wrapping up here, this passage gives us a lot of things to be praying about. Here's just a few of them. First, let's just bring our heart before the Lord and just say, Lord, what is my heart condition right now? If we're struggling to be earnest like these people are here, if we're struggling to seek the Lord with all of our heart and soul, Let's bring all of that before him and ask him just to cleanse us, renew us, strengthen us, and enable us to have a heart that seeks him with our whole heart and strength like these people do here. Another thing we could be praying about here is just asking the Lord to just show us what kind of people we're drawn to, what kind of people we're drawing to us. If we're not drawing godly people, or if we're not drawn to godly people, 
Let's ask the Lord for the grace just to make the spiritual changes in our life, the spiritual commitments in our life, the spiritual covenants in our life that we're seeing even here in this passage, so that we would live our life in fellowship with God, so we'd be drawing Christ's people to us, and we'd be drawn to Christ's people, that we might just be about Him and His kingdom. Finally, if you're tempted to rest on your laurels or to coast, all of us struggle at times with this. Just recognize that this is a temptation that we can all face, even King Asa here. And let's just bring that to the Lord and ask him to renew our hearts, cleanse our hearts so we can get back to the things that he has called us to do so that we would be like Azariah's encouraging words here. We would be strong and not lose heart and not lose courage and trust the Lord that there is a reward for the service we offer to him. So much good stuff to pray about. We'll wrap things up there. Thanks so much for listening. It's just been great to go through this passage with you. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Hope to see you tomorrow. Thanks and God bless.